Hey everybody, this video is just going to go over the answers to the section 3 expressions and functions quiz that you are going to be able to do a retake on come this Friday. So let's just get right to it. We're just going to quickly go over the answers. If you have any further questions after this video, please come in and get some help. Question 1, which table represents the function that is graphed below? Basically, you just have to look at the x and y coordinates in the table and see which table matches the function that you see. So for example, I just went ahead and highlighted the coordinate 2, 0, and let's look around some of the tables and see what, uh, what table has 2, 0 in it. If you look at choice D, when x is 2, y is 0. And if you look around at the other tables, uh, there isn't any other table that has that same combination of 2, 0. So that kind of eliminates uh, A, B, and C as answer choices. But if you happen to look at choice A, uh, and perhaps that coordinate 0, comma, negative 6, if you look at your graph, 0, comma, negative 6 would be way down here. And the graph is existing you know, well above that location. Uh, choice B, you'll notice you're at 6, 8. The point 6, 8 would be going over 6 and then up 8 units. And that is definitely not where the graph is. And then uh, uh, choice C, negative 2, 0. That would be somewhere over here on the coordinate plane, also not part of the graph. Whoops. And then choice, uh, and, and then that explains why all of those are uh, not the right answer. So again, it, it was choice D right there. Question two, to the nearest integer, what is f of negative two for the graph of the function shown below? Well, you need to remember, when you have the negative two inside of the parentheses, that negative two is your x value, your input value. When you have f of x, that is the same thing as your y value, or your output value. So when it says f of negative two, it's asking you, what is the output after you plug negative two as your input? And if you notice on the coordinate plane, when x is negative 2, which is seen right here in the circle, your y value, or the area on the graph that uses the coordinate negative 2 for its x value, well, that would be y, a y value of 3. So negative 2, comma 3. And keep in mind, whenever you get a coordinate of this type of situation, your x value is still the input, and technically, f of x, well, that is your output, your y value. So that was the answer, uh, negative 2, comma 3. So the, um, to the nearest integer, it's asking you to write down negative 3. Basically, it's just an input-output type of problem. A lot of people went ahead and shifted the graph down two or two places to the, to the left. Uh, that's not what it meant at all. Uh, for those of you that did shift the, the graph, it would have had to say something like, um, like, like f of x minus 2. That would be a shift to the left, or to the, um, that would be a shift to the right, two units. But it didn't say x inside of the parentheses. It just said f of negative 2. Number three, um, kind of a simple question when you break it down. Musa started walking on a nature trail at mile marker three. And right there, you actually have your answer handed to you, but let's just finish reading it. The nature trail is seven miles long, starting at mile marker zero. Which of the following graphs shows the distance Musa is from his original point, D of M, depending on the mile marker he is at M? Well, if you think about it, Go ahead and just look at choice A. It says right over here the distance from the starting point. That's where M Musa is starting. And it says he started walking at mile marker 3. So, mile marker 3, he would be 3 miles away from mile marker 0. And that is the only graph that shows him starting at mile marker 3. So basically, if you, uh, if you can think about it, he's starting at mile marker 3, and then you can see he ends at mile marker 4. Well, 4 plus 3, well, that's 7. And the nature trail is 7 miles long, so that's one of the other reasons why it's choice A. Number 4, kind of a tricky question. The function f of x equals 3 times the square root of x plus h plus k, and this function is graphed below. What is the solution to the equation f of x minus 2 equals 1? I'm going to show you the back doorway to understanding this problem, so just listen very carefully. You need to keep in mind that f of x equals y. 
whatever you see in this f of x notation, that idea is representing your y variable. And what you are being told is that f of x minus 2 equals 1. Your y value in this situation is going to be the number 1. So you're going to want to look at your coordinate plane and see where on this line does it have a y value of 1. Do you see it? It's right there. It's right there. But let me just keep, uh, keep explaining this and then we'll get to what the uh, answer is in a second. So, since f of x minus 2 is supposed to equal your y value, which in this case is 1, 0, 1 is located right there, and that's where, uh, that's where the graph has a y value of 1, as you can see right there. And uh, basically, when your coordinate has uh, x being 0, you know, 0, comma 1, that's the, um, that's the exact coordinate of, uh, of what we're trying to look for here. So when you are able to input f of 0, your result should be, whoops, hit that too quickly, let me just back that up. When you input f of 0, your answer should be the number 1, because that's what's happening here. 0 is your input, 1 is your output. So the coordinate 0, 1, that is what we are looking to identify, and when you get f of 0, well, what you have to realize is that because it said x minus 2 inside of the parentheses, if x was equal to 2, 2 minus 2 right here, this 2 minus 2, that would become 0. And f of 0 is going to equal 1. That was the point we were trying to find. Now, I will admit this question is not the easiest one to understand, so by all means, please come in to review with me if you have any further questions about it. I will let you know right now that there is a question just like this on the retake that you will have to take on Friday, and I am more than happy to explain this to you in person if you can come in. Number five, which of the following does not represent a function? This is simply the vertical line test. You just drop a vertical line on the function, and if it intersects the function at two or more places, it is not a function. Number one is a function. The green line only crosses the red line once. B is also a function, so is C. It is choice D that is not a function because the green line intersects the circle twice. Number six, the graph below represents the path a frisbee is thrown by two friends. Determine if the graph is linear or nonlinear and identify the intercepts. Well, keep in mind that the word linear means the graph is straight and the word nonlinear means the graph is curved. So immediately you can knock off choices A and B because this graph is a curved graph, so it's nonlinear. The last part to understand is just your x and y intercepts. It says in choice C, the x intercepts are 0 and 100, and the y intercept is just 0. So when you have x intercepts of 0 and 100, well, I just went ahead and circled them in black right there, and then the y intercept is 0, well, that's the exact same point that you have right here. So choice C is the correct answer. Choice D is wrong because it says the x-intercept is 0, and that is excluding the x-intercept of 100. That is all the way over here, so it can't be choice D. Number 7, consider the graph of the piecewise function defined below, and just uh, select all that apply. So we're basically just going to go through each one of these answer choices and understand why it is or is not part of the answer. Number 1, the graph is increasing when x is less than negative 2. Well, your x-axis is right there, the horizontal axis. When you are at negative 2, the black dot you see right there is representing negative 2. And then if it's going to the left, well, then that means, uh, that means the graph is, uh, is decreasing when x is less than negative 2. Um, but it says increasing, so that is not correct. The graph is getting, uh, the x values are, are staying the same, actually. This is actually a constant right here. It's constantly, it's not increasing or decreasing. So is the graph increasing when x is less than negative 2? No, it is not. So it is not choice A. Part B, the graph has a relative minimum at 0, 0. That means if you see it turn like in a parabola, 
then it has a minimum or a maximum. And part B absolutely has a minimum. It is located right there where that black dot just appeared. So B is one of your answers. Choice C, the graph has one maximum. Now you might think that this point up here or this point right here could be a maximum value, but what you have to understand is that those are not turning points. They are just two separate pieces of the piecewise function. You need the graph to be curved in order to have a maximum. So because that did not happen, C is not an answer. The graph is decreasing when x is less than negative 2, or, or I'm sorry, when uh, the graph is decreasing when x is between 0 and negative 2 and also more than 2. Well, what you need to understand is this. Decreasing from negative 2 to 0, look at those purple check marks. The purple check mark on the left is at negative 2 on the x-axis, and the purple check mark on the right is at 0. So this is the, this is the domain we're looking at from negative 2 to 0. And what you can see is that the graph is absolutely going down. It is decreasing. However, the second part of this answer choice says, and x is greater than 2. So that means that also must be happening. Well, look where x is uh, greater, than, greater than 2. It's right here, and the graph is decreasing as x is greater than 2. The thing that unfortunately makes choice D wrong is the fact that the graph stops when x equals 7. It's not decreasing anymore. And this inequality is implying that it is decreasing forever when really it should have said x is decreasing from uh, positive 2 all the way to uh, 7. This is what it would have had to have said in order for choice D to be correct. Choice E, the domain is from negative 2 to 7. Uh, that is not correct because negative 2 is right there, circled in red, and the function is existing all the way down here, which is using other x values that are more negative than negative 2. So it can't be choice E. Choice F is correct, though. The domain is from negative 6 to positive 7. Uh, the lowest domain value is negative 6 right there, and the highest is positive 7 right there, so F is correct. Number eight, evaluate the piecewise function for f of 6. That basically means you just plug in 6 as your x value into the function notation. And because in the top part of the piecewise function it says x is greater than 4, well then that means you are going to use the top equation 3x minus 5 in order to evaluate this. Um, you don't use the bottom one because it says only use domain values that are less than 4. And because 6 is greater than 4 we have to use the top equation. So you simply plug in 6 for x. 3 times 6 minus 5, you get 18, and 18 minus 5 is 13. That's all you had to do. But you did have a gridded response box, and what you need to do is either write down the number 13 pushed all the way to the right, or you could have also drawn it all the way to the left. Number 9, the following graph represents the function f of x. Sketch and label the following functions on the same coordinate plane. Choice A, f of x plus 2. You need to remember that when you add 2 on the inside of the parentheses, that is the backwards logic, the reverse logic, you are shifting to the left 2 units. So when you draw that to the left 2 units, the line would look like that in black. Part B, f of x minus 5, again the minus 5 is inside of the parentheses, you would shift that to the right, 5 units, and there you go. Part C, f of x plus 2, that is a shift up of 2, so it would just go up 2 units, and you will notice right here that two of the graphs now occupy the same line, that's fine, that happens from time to time, just draw right over it. Part D, f of x minus 5, you, sh you simply shift down 5 units. Oops, actually went down six units. Ah, whatever, you can get the point. Should have been a five. There we go. And uh, number 10, describe the transformation that occurred when f of x transformed to f of x plus 2. Well, because the x plus 2 part is inside of the parentheses, that is a horizontal shift, and all horizontal shifts are reverse logic. So the graph went two units to the left. All right, guys, that covers the explanation of these solutions. I went over them quickly to keep the video short. By all means, come in for additional questions if you have them. I'm available anytime in the mornings or the afternoons except for Wednesdays. All right, guys, I'll see you later.